Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ken Gilman here. I've got uh, what I think is a very helpful, interesting and exciting bit of discovery and information to uh, share with people. <clears throat> this may be where citizen science could help with major advances in neuropharmacology. Let me tell you about it quickly. These MAOI drugs cause a couple of effects on blood pressure which can be a little bit problematical. One of them is this business of the often referred to as paradoxical post-dose hypertension, increased blood pressure, hypertension which occurs in the hour or two after tranylcypramine and phenylzine uh, to a greater or lesser extent. It's only problematical in a relatively small number of patients and it seems to be dose related and occurs somewhat more frequently in patients on higher doses. Sometimes it seems to get somewhat less when people have been on it for a while, but not necessarily. It can be a problem, it can be symptomatic. Uh, I don't think that it's ever likely to be dangerous, um, but it, it can be symptomatic and it can cause people uh, anxiety. The second problem that can occur quite commonly is exercised induced hypotension, low blood pressure. And that can be quite marked. Some people, even with relatively modest degrees of exercise, such as many of us, <coughs> many of you, uh, might <laughs> undertake for various different reasons, um, it can induce very substantial hypotension, enough to make people faint and have to go and lie down and not be able to function properly for, you know, a little while. Then thirdly, as many of you will know, a degree of postural hypotension occurs in everyone who takes MAOIs, usually of a useful and quite modest degree, uh, and not problematical to any great extent anyway. Indeed, it can be quite useful for some people whose blood pressures are a little bit high and, as I've explained before in other things I've written and said, these MAOI drugs were in fact used as blood pressure lowering drugs back in the 1960s? Yeah, 60s. They worked, but of course better drugs came along very quickly, so they fell out of fashion pretty quickly. But people have forgotten that. So. That's why I keep saying that the degree of orthostatic hypotension, i.e. the extent to which people's blood pressure drop, drops when they go from sitting or lying to standing, the degree of that drop is a useful indication of whether the dose of MAOIs is high enough. But once people have been on them for two to four weeks, the extent of that drop becomes somewhat less. But it's usually measurable all the time they're on the drug and their blood pressure is usually somewhat lower all the time they're on the drug. But in a proportion of people that can be sufficiently great to be seriously problematical uh, and occasionally what percentage of people? Um, excuse me five percent of people one in 20 something like that have continuing and problematic degree of postural hypotension and of course the remedies for that are not entirely satisfactory uh, sometimes it even involves people giving fludrocortisone, which was, which is one of the mineralocorticoid 
uh, steroids, which causes sodium retention and fluid retention and increases blood pressure. That can be helpful, but it's not without its problems. Um, uh, other drugs like the stimulant type drugs can sometimes help. Um, amphetamines even can sometimes help, but of course that's problematic because not many doctors have got the experience to combine amphetamines with MAOIs and some people consider it's dangerous, which it can be if it's not done carefully. So there aren't any ideal solutions for this business of more severe postural hypotension with these drugs. For a useful proportion of people, simply taking extra salt and having plenty of fluids is enough. And after a week or, sorry, I don't mean a week, after two to four weeks, people acclimatized to it to the extent that it's not nearly such a problem. But nevertheless, it is a significant issue in quite a proportion of patients. Now, one of our eminent experts, Professor Ian White, um, who, like me, is now retired, but Ian's a very eminent clinical pharmacologist and toxicologist, one of the very few people to have multiple fellowships of various different organisations. And as some of you will know, he has, with his long-standing team at the uh, Newcastle Hospital and the Hunter Area Health Authority, produced an immense amount of seminal work relating to toxicology generally, but especially relating to serotonin toxicity. And I've been associated with Ian for a great many years now. Ian suggested quite a long time ago that apart from paradoxical hypertension being helped by beta blockers, it also substantially helped exercise-induced hypotension. And we discussed this on my expert group. But it occurred around the time COVID was starting, and somehow it sort of got lost in all of the happenings that were going on, as happenings do. Um, Something happened more recently which reminded me about it, although I have suggested one or two people who consult me over the internet try it. But uh, that hasn't led to the accumulation of any reliable documented data about changes in blood pressure, which might have allowed me to say something more definite. But what happened reminded me about this, and I went back to look at what Ian had said a couple of years ago, and I thought, look, it really is important for this to be followed up, uh, and something that a patient experienced reinforced the idea that beta blockers might actually help the general orthostatic hypotension that many patients experience. So if you like, the third type of blood pressure disturbance. So first of all, you've got the post-dose hypertension, then you've got the general level of low blood pressure that everybody experiences, which can sometimes be excessive and cause symptoms. And then you've got this business of the severe exacerbation uh, of low blood pressure caused by exercise, exercise-induced hypotension. So if you like, that's three separate issues. But of course, the question immediately arises is whether the exercise-induced hypotension is fundamentally the same mechanism as the general orthostatic hypotension. So when I thought of that, I thought, well, we really ought to test this idea because there's a definite possibility, I might even go as far as to say a strong possibility, that the mechanisms are sufficiently similar or maybe even the same that beta blockers might actually help orthostatic hypotension. That leads on to the suggestion about citizen science because of course that experiment, if you like, is so simple and so related to routine clinical care that it doesn't require 
any kind of deliberation or ethical approval or anything like that. Okay, well, citizen scientists, step forwards. The beta blockers that we use for this so-called paradoxical post-dose hypertension uh, are propranolol and atenolol, essentially. One can use metoprolol, uh, but probably propranolol and atenolol are the go-to drugs. The dosage needs to be adjusted a little. Propranolol is metabolized by 2D6 in the liver, which shows a lot of genetic variation. And that means that some people need a smaller dose and some people need a larger dose. But that's something that's straightforward and any competent doctor should be able to uh, advise on that. 40 milligrams twice a day. Um, it's got a half-life of six to nine hours, so morning and afternoon or whatever uh, should be satisfactory or morning and lunchtime even, depending on exactly what the timing of symptoms is and so on. So let's just deal with propranolol to keep it simple. So for the post-dose hypertension, we know that propranolol works well. It certainly works for the exercise-induced hypotension, and that's the bit that I said before is paradoxical and maybe this is one of the reasons why people haven't latched on to it because somehow the paradox of it helping both high and low blood pressure with the same drugs just doesn't seem right does it but that's how it is but where the citizen scientists come in is producing some proper data that it really does work to ameliorate to lessen the hypotension that everybody gets uh, and that can be a problem. The reason it does that, uh, sorry, I, when I say it does that, I mean the exercise-induced hypotension, is because with exercise, the arterioles that control blood flow to muscles allow a greater blood flow that reduces the resistance that the heart has to pump blood around the circulation at, the so-called systemic vascular resistance, which means your blood pressure is lower. The lower the systemic vascular resistance, the lower your blood pressure. That's the action of adrenaline and noradrenaline on the beta receptors, beta adrenergic receptors, in the muscle supply arterioles. Therefore blocking beta receptors lessens that action. So beta blockers actually cause constriction of those arterioles in that circumstance. They may cause dilation in other circumstances, but when you've got that situation with dilation due to exercise, they counteract the effect of adrenaline and cause constriction. So the question is, is the same thing happening with people who get excessive hypotension even if they don't exercise? And that's what we need to establish by doing some simple measurements. So the recommended procedure that I've always advocated uh, of checking your blood pressure regularly, sitting and standing twice when you're standing, uh, would rapidly reveal whether beta blockers lessen the general orthostatic hypotension. So anybody who's experiencing that to a significant and definite degree simply needs to take a dose of a beta blocker and uh, measure their blood pressure in the hour or three after taking the beta blocker. And providing you're taking an adequate dose uh, which for most people is going to be 40 milligrams. Some people will need 80 or even 160 milligrams. 
Um, but that shouldn't be done without you know, supervision and advice. We'll be able to see a definite change. It's as simple as that. You know, if your blood pressure is dropping from 120 to 100 routinely when you stand up, and then when you take 40 milligrams of propranolol, that stops happening, or happens a lot less, uh, you don't need a medical scientist or a statistician to tell you it's working. Um, and that's interesting in a sense, in that it reflects on one of my major criticisms of randomised controlled trials. Because as a number of eminent scientists have said in the past, and one in, including one of the most famous statisticians of the 20th century, uh, Austin Hill, if the results are clear enough, you don't need statistics to demonstrate them, or randomization. So it's something anybody can demonstrate and it's a clear and unequivocal change as demonstrated by the blood pressure reading. The last thing I will say is that what we would like to do and what I will try to do with somebody's help is to get somebody to write an app because I bet you there are plenty of people listening to this who are one step ahead already and have said to themselves, well, that's easy. What you do is you use an app that puts all the information onto a central server so that I and my assistants can analyze the data and rapidly see uh, an accumulation of results from various different people uh, and see whether it works or not. We're gonna try and do that, but in the meantime, it's so simple and clear that anybody who wants to can do what I've suggested and send the results to us with a few decent pre and post treatment measurements to see if there's a difference. Also, of course, anybody with significant exercise induced hypotension can do the same thing. Um, but I don't think there's any argument, at least not in my mind, about whether it works in that scenario. But, but nevertheless, it would be wonderful to have some good data on that, because probably to influence doctors and scientific opinion generally, uh, it would be good to be able to publish some properly done observations formally in a scientific journal. That would certainly be of considerable assistance in persuading people that this is real and not some spurious effect that they can imagine away by some spurious argument. So there you are. Please join in, become a citizen scientist and see what you can do. Right, so that's my end of year message. And look, if we could demonstrate that beta blockers did in fact prevent the routine postural hypotension that is a significant problem with these drugs, that would be quite sensational because both beta blockers and MAYs have been in use for 50 years, in fact more, nearly 60 years now. The guy who invented beta blockers, I think, didn't he get a Nobel Prize? Beta blockers propranolol was the first purpose-designed drug to block beta receptors. It, it, it was pharmacological history. Very interesting. So these drugs have been in use for 60 years, and yet in all that time, nobody has made this crucial observation. So if it turns out to be true, um, I think that's not only extremely useful, but sensational and interesting. So go to it, folks. See you next year. <laughs> Bye for now.